Hey guys, Turret here bringing you a 1v1 today. This is from ESL Go4 Cup number 3, the European edition. So playing for you today, spawning in the north, we have Overlord playing as US Forces. He's actually a top 10 US Forces player, if you're not familiar with him. Also in quite a few uh, ranged teams, highly ranked ranged teams. In the south, we have Cruz playing as Ostia. This man should need no introduction, played in many, many tournaments and uh, placed highly in most of them. For his loadout, he's got Ostrupen, Mobile Defense and German Mechanized, which has been seeing a lot more play these days, uh, especially on this map in particular. You have seen, may have seen uh, Love Nest using this strategy, spotting scopes and the command tank being the main, main things we see from this. So maybe we'll get to see uh, Cruiser's take on German Mechanized. Overlord on the other hand has Armor Company, Rifle Company and Tactical Support. So Cruz gets caught out there by those riflemen making a beeline for that garrison with his MG and has to retreat so that's unfortunate for him. Did cap all this territory on his way there so he didn't really like rush there with his pioneers. Oh, as a result of that, he's probably going to switch over to the other side, which I... I mean, it's... I would recommend him doing. Obviously, it's the path of uh, least resistance, but... You don't really want to be crossing the river, because... As you know, there's a bit of cover here, and that can... Go south on you, as a result. So Cruz, obviously not opting to go with Ostrupen, is bringing out a sniper though. And yeah, I mean, there's not not that much in the late game from any of his commanders, so it's probably going to see a bit of tier four coming out of Cruz, I imagine. And that's, that's what the command tank really helps you do. You can skip tier 3 and go straight for tier 4 and you just bridge the gap with that command tank really good against US forces. Because the command tank's so durable and its main gun, while it's pretty weak against armor, it's good against US forces like vehicles. And uh, it, it can go right against the Sherman. But most importantly, its main gun is actually pretty good at killing infantry. If you can wipe a few rifle squads, you're in very good stead against US forces. Especially in the late game, they really need that veterancy on their riflemen to compete against your LMG Grenadiers. So Cruz is indeed switching over to the other side of the river. Somewhat slow rotation though, he's trying to get a bit of bleed running on these uh, from his uh, sniper. Only got one kill so far. See four rifles from Overlord. I actually think he's probably not going for Lieutenant. Probably going to see a Captain coming out of him. Rifleman coming down. Trying to flank these greens. It's time to switch his targets. Greens repositioned behind the cover. Rifleman back away. So a good fight here for Cruz, but he's still slightly behind in terms of territory. Already we see a sweeper from Overlord. He doesn't run run over an early telemine, which does seem to be quite popular these days in the high levels of play, especially against US forces. You know, odds are you're going to see a light vehicle of some sorts, and the teller will kill any of those light vehicles. So. You can kill your US Forces opponent's light vehicle with a teller. You know, I mean, honestly, you can probably win the game. It's a, a big deal. So, Sniper continuing to work on these riflemen from a distance. And we do indeed see him Captain coming out of Overlord now. And close in against those greens and the greens decide to get out they did try and bleed them on the advance but as soon as they got into close range knowing they'd probably lose their engagement got out of there 
So conservative play there from Cruz. Also, if he did stick around, it would only really be worthwhile if his sniper was nearby and the sniper was more over here. There's our line of sight blocked by these trees, of course, so... can really make that work. Oh, Rifleman closing in from the other side. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> Austere sniper is very hard to kill. He's uh, getting pretty close to the one, I imagine. Yeah, one more kill, and he will be there. We see a 2 2 2 coming up from Cruz. Slightly late on his 2 2 2, but of course he didn't have fuel for quite a while in the early game because of that early engagement that he lost, and his MG had to retreat straight away. So. I'm not surprised there's 2 2 2 is this late, but it makes me question why he even went for a 2 2 2 because your opponent isn't going for the M20. 2 2 2 just doesn't stack up that well. It uh, loses badly to the AA half track and to the Stuart. So it makes me think that maybe Cruz is uh, leaning towards going German mechanized, and of course, putting the spotting scopes on the 2 2 2 makes that thing. Uh, have incredible side range. So it's probably Cruz's reasoning behind that. Usually I would not recommend uh, getting a 2 2 2 in this situation. Now he's investing in a pack. Nice decision. Obviously expecting the Stuart shortly. I don't know if he spotted the captain yet. Probably about to though. So the captain's trying to get a flank on the 2 2 2. He's coming down the down the center with quite a few riflemen for support. Sniper's here in a bad spot as well. Exposed himself there. Captain gets two bazooka shots off on the 2 2 2 2 2, two stops. Getting perhaps blocked by the pack. And down goes 2 2 2 2, the bazookas. Sniper trying to run away. I'm not sure if Overlord spotted that during the uh, during that engagement. May have been, uh, may have had tunnel vision on that 2 2 2. Looks like he's going to try to wipe this Grandia on retreat with low health. Trying to block the models as they retreat with that lead squad. Nice micro there by Overlord. But they do get away on one man. Kind of lucky there for Cruz, honestly. And they're also lucky that a sniper is nestled away in this corner here. Unlikely to get found down there. Here comes the Stuart trying to flush the squad out of the garrison and immediately they retreat. Stuart's also crushing all his S mines nicely done there. It's getting full value out of that Stuart. He crushed all those S mines in one fell swoop and also free to chase away that squad. Nicely done there by Overlord. So Cruz equipping all of his grenadiers with LMG, so it should give him a bit of f uh, firepower advantage over Overlord, at least for the short term. Probably going to see tactical support, honestly, so about a quarter of a command point away from being able to afford those uh, M1919s, of course. He's got a lot of munitions banked up, so he could equip all his riflemen with at least one M1919 right now. Perhaps one squad with two by the time he gets to that point. MG42 out here by itself being bum rushed here by three riflemen and a Stuart. That thing's dead for sure. Bad play there by Cruz. Real late on this retreat. In fact, I'm not sure what he's up to at all here. Confusing kind of few plays here. Pack is rather stationary. Probably Probably could have got one shot off on the Stuart from this angle. Is on. I'm not sure. Maybe he's busy microing this engagement here, but he ends up costing himself his MG. Looks like he's invested in another MG immediately, though. Oh, okay. We're going to see the half track coming out now, and looks like he's upgrading that with. The Quad. This is probably going to see some M1919s now being distributed to all the rifles as well. So this is a pretty potent light armor force here for Overlord. Stuart can deal with anything up to a medium tank. And the quad is really good at shutting down infantry. 
So good at chasing down squads. And, uh, just generally suppressing them. Taking a good spot here. It's one shot off. Stuart not going to be denied though. Continues to chase. Quad coming in from the side here. Pack doesn't know what to shoot at now. It doesn't have any grenadiers here for Faust support. It looks like the pack going to be decrewed. We are now arriving on the scene. MG42 is in trouble. Here come Riflemen from the north. Nice play here by Overlord. Green's trying to get in range of a Faust. Unable to do so. His pressure shuts him down. And things are just going horribly for Cruz right now. His pack's probably going to get stolen right here. Locks in mobile defense. Needs that Puma immediately. Otherwise, he's going to lose this game. So it looks like Stuart may go down here unless he activates the Shell Shock. He does. Oh, but the Puma gets the shot off just in the nick of time. Just before that shot comes through. Now, Sniper trying to work on these Rifleman squads. Doesn't want them recruiting this pack and stealing it. Looks like they're thinking about doing that now and instead just try to hold on to the cutoff maybe snipers having his line of sight here blocked by the wreckage sticks around neutralizes that cutoff there and uh, gets out of there doesn't want to bleed too much to the sniper all in all things could have gone a lot work worse there for Cruz and what, what happened to the quad quad still alive that, that Puma came just in the nick of time. He just got five command points. Probably aided by the fact that he lost so much in that uh, engagement. Sped that uh, command point clock around right quick. And that Puma just, just in the nick of time. If Overlord was a bit quicker on the shell shock and that first shell that the Stuart shot was a stun shot. He might have been able to close the game right there. LMG rifle, uh, Renz, making short work of this rifle squad. It's lucky to escape with this life. Puma's back up to full health. Gonna try to keep this M16 at bay. Nice positioning of the captain there though, getting a few bazooka shots in. I'm sticking on the front lines. With a, uh, bit of a micro and range test here. Trying to keep the sniper, keeping the captain at bay, whereas the sniper has to stay away from the M16, and then the Puma has to stay away from the captain, but needs to stay in range of the M16, so it's a tough one to micro, and a minor mistake could end up costing you sniper. Oh, nice choice here by Overlord, bringing in an AT gun from the side here, so if the Puma backs down this road, quite easily go down. It's quite safe here though. AT gun will have tr a lot of trouble shooting through that wall. Even if he uses attack ground, so pretty safe in that position. Oh look at that. Three riflemen in need of cover get instantly suppressed and pinned now by SMG42. That is the uh, benefits of being in negative cover. Or the disadvantages rather. <laughs> it does increase the amount of suppression you receive. Oh, the sniper. It's doing so much damage here. MG42 repositioned nicely. Pins the squad. Gets a grenade off and that's all almost almost wiped that squad in fact. Surprised uh, he doesn't retreat there to heal it up again. Sniper's doing a pretty good job though. How's he going on kills? I can't click on him though. 22. Pretty. I mean, that's that's a good rate with a sniper. You know, you want to be going at least one kill per minute in the early game. Squad 
Is this another Stuart now coming out from uh, Overlord? C curious choice. I know that Jeslin is quite fond of massing Stuarts. And they are quite good against mobile defense, I suppose, but they seem quite risky. Jeslin has made it work though in the past, so uh, who am I to question? And one of the best players ever to play. Looks like Overlord's gonna come around this side with this M16, maybe around the flank with this. Stuart, M uh, AT gun connects. Stuart's getting some pack fire though, and the Puma. Oh, down goes the Stuart. Two Puma shots and a pack shot, that's all you need. Puma doing 120 damage per shot, so that's 240 from him. 160 on the pack adds up to 400, the exact health of the Stuart. That's what uh, makes mobile defense such a good counter to that Stuart. So Overlord's is in a bit of trouble now, I imagine, I mean he's got obviously good map control and a good VP lead, but I imagine he's going to be going for the Calliope shortly. Cruz um on the other hand, probably going to save for that command tank right about now. And the command tank's really good against the Calliope because it gives that defensive bonus in effect gives your troops is it 20 or 25 percent extra health and that makes a really big difference against rocket artillery rocket artillery does 80 damage the exact health of a uh, model but when they've got 20 percent extra health from the command tank aura it means one direct hit from a rocket will not actually kill a squad member and so it actually makes them so much more durable against rocket artillery really good against the client yeah. Of course, Clive is still so strong, it's probably going to get some wipes, but I mean, it's not going to be crazy overpowered wipe like it, like is usually the case. So, that is indeed the command P4 we're seeing from Cruz. Oh, M16 in a bit of trouble. Oh, activate overdrive. And the follow-up shot misses. Mante gets his first few opening shots there on those riflemen. Oh, this is a risky spot for, for the sniper, but just kidding. Got that command tank aura and it's the austere sniper. That thing is indestructible. At, especially at the high levels of play, this thing is, it seems to be the game decider these days. So Overlord has indeed called in the Calliope and what he does with it in the next couple of barrages will probably set the tone for the game. He's had a rough few engagements, lost two Stuarts. So Cruz is in a pretty good spot and Overlord really needs his Calliope to get a couple nice licks in with his rockets otherwise. Could be in for a long game. Opening barrage here, targeting the pack. Also gets quite a few squad members here. Six kills. Decent. No wipes though. Oh! Where's the, where's the M1? The M1 hot on the heels of this beautiful command take, but I think he's gonna have to give up the chase. Oh no, he's vet one and he could be using take aim. No, he's not using take aim though. And if he was using take aim, probably would have spotted that P4 command tank that was stalled there, but either way, would have required two, maybe even three shots. It's hard to gauge with the uh, defensive aura, of course. How much health that P4 command tank really has. Oh, and down goes the Puma. A little bit deep there. Ended up knocking out this <laughs> half track. 
And he had to stick around a bit longer than he hoped because it did get abandoned. Stick around for that one extra shot and those things really make a big difference. Might have been able to get his plume out otherwise. But that was not the case this time. And those are those frustrating moments of RNG that they tend to rage out of about. And I don't really blame them. It's his second Puma now for Cruz. So it looks like he's got no plans of teching up in the immediate future. Well, I mean, he has teched up, but putting down his tech and building some non calling tanks. Not really sure why he went for the Puma, honestly. At this stage, of course, he, I suppose he did deploy that before that M16 died, so it made slightly more sense then, but unless he's planning on diving with the Puma, trying to kill the Calliope, he's not going to have much much to do with this thing for a wee while. Of course, the Puma's not really a good counter to the Calliope. Calliope can bounce its shells on its frontal armor. And Puma only doing 120 damage to the Glypie's 640 health. Takes a lot of shots, not the regular four shots of uh, most medium tanks, so... Very hard to kill the Glypie with the Puma. That's why people uh, really hate the Glypie as well. So hard to kill compared to other rocket artillery. Most of it going down to one shot, except for the walking Stuka going down to two shots. The sniper, man, this thing's <laughs> having a field day. 42 kills in 22 minutes. Pretty much two kills a minute. Well, probably even greater than that. It hasn't been on the field since the first minute of the game, so this thing is having a great time. Kind of surprised to see Overlords not using that decrew um, mechanism. Try and decrease his manpower upkeep. Also would be good to decrease his Calliope because it has taken one shot of damage. I know it's very hard to kill but why take that risk of uh, not, not having it full health? If we take a brief look at the tactical map we see Cruz now starting to take control he's in a pretty good spot that last Calliope barrage well off target so as a result of that Cruz is slowly taking control of this map now putting down a few S mines on this fuel nice to see there and uh, that's one thing that players are really really taking full advantage of these days I know S mine fields have a starting cost requirement of 60 but if you cancel or if you can only plant like one or two patches the other patches show up red it'll only charge you the amount of munitions that you actually put down so if you put down like one of the four patches it'll only charge you 15 and that is taking full advantage of that they're very good at wiping squads for 15 munitions for a means your opponent has to send either a tank to go crush them or a minesweeper over there and it can really delay their progress and uh, especially when it comes to lone, lone capping squads it makes your life a lot harder for your opponent see Overlord making a beeline straight for the cutoff there which is nice to see and now making progress across the left still in a tough spot in terms of map control but has drained crews pretty much down 250 VP so he's got a healthy VP lead but we all know Ostia are very very strong in the late game so it's not over yet Clive targeting the sniper Ooh, almost gets it there I think if it wasn't for that command tank aura that sniper might have gone down there extra you know that's what I was saying earlier about the Command tanks aura giving that extra bit of health. And uh, keeping your squads alive against the Calliope. Got to see it in full effect there with the sniper. Taking that Calliope barrage like a hero. Looks 
like he is using take aim now on his AT gun, so that should be giving him some good line of sight. Yeah, so look how far you can see him. Also, he knows how much of that is actually reducing the rifleman and reducing the AT gun. Yep. So yeah, good line of sight there from the AT gun due to taking. I see that ability getting some use. Under fire. What the hell am I meant to do with these recruits? We're losing a capture point. Grab your shit and follow me. Oh, this rifleman being blasted down. Looks like there are two M1919s on this rifle squad, and that's why they're having a field day against these grenadiers. Mercy Cruz invested in another sniper, double sniper, so deadly. Oh, that was so close. 50% chance of pretty much of hitting a squad on retreat there and misses both of those shots. Probably an opportunity gone begging there. You should have used the incendiary shot. This thing is 100% chance of hitting on retreating squads. And that's what makes the Ostead sniper so potent at the moment. So good against retreating squads. Patch crews thought, oh, well, you know, it's two 50% chances of hitting the squad, what could go wrong? But that MG did end up getting away as a result. Like targeting the snipers, unsuccessful though, with that barrage, perhaps a bit obvious where he was targeting. Looks like Overlord has ticked up to Major, he's also equipped uh, in my D19 now as Major. So we're probably going to be seeing a tank from him, and in fact, exactly what's coming out now is Sherman. The capture point is under attack. Ready, oh, look at this sniper. He's uh, going to work on this MG again. Maybe he's going to use the incendiary shot here. No. no. Not today. These snipers, though, racking up a tremendous kill count. 50 on this one, 8 on the other. Huge thorn in Overlord's side right now. And uh, Overlord, <laughs> I'm sure he's licking his lips at the prop. I thought of that uh, Sherman coming out and maybe that high explosive shell doing a bit of damage to these snipers. Really wants to get those wiped. Oh, I may have forgotten to mention but this is from the best of one round still in ESL so whoever wins this one will uh, will progress and also I imagine because Overlord's top 10 with US forces but his next his uh, highest axis rank is I think top 100 is Ostia just inside the top 100 he probably selected US forces, so Cruz probably selected the map crossing in the woods. So Sherman exposed itself briefly there, takes a pack shot, Puma also rotates, but didn't get there in the nick of time. Looks like Sherman's going to pull back for some repairs. IP rockets have recharged. Looks like he's going to line up a shot. Perhaps going to aim at this MG pack cluster over here. In fact, he's bringing in a recon run, and this is a bit of a giveaway that is uh, likely to be fire once again. Oh, down goes the major to the sniper. And we've got a P4 now from Cruz, so he's not taking all the way to tier 4. Instead, going for tier 3. Oh, Calliope's targeting the sniper once again. Look at that. For command tank or a saves the sniper and uh, that Clive is really not going to get anything else done he's only got seven kills so far and six of them were in the first barrage so this thing has been doing decent amounts of damage to the sniper that P4 command tank or is keeping the sniper alive and these Clive barrages ultimately not 
not leading to uh, much results for Overlord. Kind of surprised the crews did not just uh, go for tier 4. Tier 3, of course, is rock solid. P I mean, the P4 can deal with the Sherman with no real issues. But it would have been nice to see him take up to tier 4. Have the option of going for the Panther and, of course, the Panzerwerfer, which is also just a white machine these days. Extremely potent, especially in team games. But of course, at least that can die to one one shot from a medium tank, so... Oh, Perrin takes a shot on his rear from the anti gun. Almost two shots, in fact. It's getting a nice positioning on that M1, making use of its high range. Bringing it down the road here, perhaps hoping to get a few more shots off on these tanks. These tanks bleeding these infantry squads quite heavily, though. Here comes the Sherman, still on uh, low health. I don't think he's killed that, and it looks like a rifle squad went down there to a P4 command tank shot. Oopsie daisy. Oh, but the M1's getting a few good licks in on this P4 command tank now. AT Sherman coming in from the side. Where's the pack? Pack's in a decent spot. Ichi Sherman opens up on the snipers. Oh, this could be big. Pack repositioning now. No, Sherman's on uh, armor piercing rounds, not high explosive, so. Quite hard to hit infantry with those armor piercing rounds. M1 gets decrewed. Terrible loss there. Oh my god, that's so bad. It was Vet 3. That thing was so strong. Here comes the Clive Brush on the snipers, though. Wiped one. The other one. Oh, he wipes them both! He wipes them both! That was the hit he's been looking for this whole game. Finally comes good. Wipes both snipers to both teams. Uh, both, uh, both of them taking tremendous losses. Here comes the uh, strafing run. This thing does a lot of damage to squads. Almost wipes this one. Here comes the Sherman trying to get the follow up before trying to hunt down this low health Sherman now. I suppose it's not really low health, but not full health. The crew's deciding to destroy this M1 instead. It looks like Overlord's gonna invest in a Jackson now, and that should be very good against these medium tanks. And this is where perhaps ticking to tier 4, I mean, uh, not ticking to tier 4, may bite crews in the behind the Jackson. Very strong against these uh, tier 3 tanks. But uh, has a lot of trouble penetrating the high frontal line of the Panther, of course. Also, the Sherman, when it's on AP rounds, has pretty decent penetration. I think it's got better penetration than the T3476. So, also pretty good against tier 3 medium tanks. So, well, both t players taking pretty heavy losses in their last engagement and you can see the population pretty much even on both so got a pretty pretty even match this game of course overlord has about 200 vp lead so perhaps that's his edge oh clarky lining up a shot again i imagine it's oh okay it's going for this grenadier on their vp managed to avoid harm I don't think that Clive even got five, 10 kills, maybe he got two green models. I don't see any corpses strewn about though. Oh, this camera work there. <laughs> Both players trying to kite each other, trying to get a few good looks. It looks like the Jackson got one good shot off on the E4 command tank. Back in a good spot though. And if he gets too too far forward, this thing has bit one now. Target weak point could uh, easily burst down either of these two tanks if they get stunned by that target weak point. We he's trying to get a Faust off, ends up costing him the squad there. I don't know what he was thinking. Incredibly reckless play by Cruz there. Lost him a squad. Looks like his MG42 also got decrewed by a grenade. Things are going pretty badly for Cruz right now. 
Now he's making a suicide push down the center with Ostrup, and I suppose if there's any squad that we should do this with, it would be Ostrup. Trying to get Faust off on one of these mediums, unsuccessful though. Crew's mobilizing a huge armored force though, he's made two P4s, P4 command tank and a Puma. Jackson trying to kite away from the this P4 command force. P4. Oh, down goes the Puma, armor piercing rounds on this MG42. Calliope's in trouble. Jackson trying to kite away still. Where is the. Uh... Okay, Sherman's on another errand. But the Calliope has gone down. Oh, down goes one P4. Sherman's still on the flanks. Both players microing furiously. This MG has definitely been the MVP. Those armor piercing rounds shredding through the Puma and causing all sorts of issues for Cruiser's push and here comes the P4, I mean the Sherman, but there's another P4 there. Oh, and he's taking a Faust now. P4 closing in to try and get the kill. Zooka's on the rear though. Where is the Jackson? Jackson's back here. Cannot come to support this. Sherman's going down for sure. Captain sprinting up, perhaps hoping to get a few bazooka shots and P4 command tanks in trouble now from the Jackson and the bazookas. Looks like this uh, wreckage here blocking the line of sight. Jackson cannot continue to chase. Now the P4 is going deep trying to kill the Jackson. P4 is indeed going deep for the Jackson. He doesn't have any snares nearby. He's desperately trying to kite this. He's activated the high velocity armor piercing rounds though. Oh and he gets the kill! Simultaneous shots there! Both tank goes down! Wow! Crazy luck there. If you don't know what those high velocity armor piercing rounds do, usually the Jackson does 200 damage per shot, but I believe that high velocity armor piercing rounds takes them up to 240. So uh, that was the difference there. Those two shots with the, as uh, some people call them, that EVAP rounds or the HVAP rounds just rip through that P4 and uh, simultaneous death there. Wow! crazy engagement both players <laughs> forces shattered but Cruz did manage to hold on to this P4 command tank so he's in a decent spot of course Overlord has a Sherman coming out himself so once that Sherman comes out we'll pretty much be le level pegging into his army but of course Overlord still has that VP lead so it may come in handy The pressure is definitely on Cruz with 125 VPs to go. So, Sherman on the field being upgraded with the Pintle machine gun, 50 cal. You see, Cruz is floating a lot of munitions, so. Uh, he can afford to spam as many s as he likes, also equip his squads with as many upgrades as possible. But there's really not that many munition sinks for mobile defense. He could be using counter-attack, which, I mean, why the hell not when you've got 400 munitions? Of course, he's got smoke on his tanks, but that's really about it. Kind of a shame, honestly, not seeing him use counter-attack more. I think I saw Loveness use this quite a lot in a game recently. It does help you, uh, you know, squeak out that extra bit of capping power. The enemy is attempting to steal our sector. My flank is oh, this could be trouble. Sniper getting way too far forwards. Sherman perhaps going to chase here. Still on the armor piercing rounds though. Not quite as good against infantry with those on. And as you can see there, neither of those shells connecting. Ooh, MG42 on the rifleman, nasty stuff. And we can see that in terms of infantry corps, Overlord definitely hit a cruise. He's got a lot of veterans he's still on his rifleman. His cruise lost most of his grenadiers, lost his MG. And now his main corps is of Ostrupen. Looks like Cruz now going for a Stub. Interesting choice. Does have a good penetration and a tremendous rate of fire, so you can give him a good position, can light up a Sherman. 
Right, camps rotating to deal with this unit. Looks like we may be seeing the dual AT grenades now coming in on the Stuck. Damage engine now, that's in a bit of trouble. But uh, it's, where's this? Eight, no, okay, no, the pack is in base, so I think it's going to be safe to retreat and repair up. As you can hear the announcer state there, 100 VPs to go. This is starting to look a bit grim for crews now. Oh! This one's very lucky to escape with their life after that rifle grenade. So yeah, I think it comes down to Overlord having slightly better squad preservation at this stage. Also crews making that very daring push and that MG42 being in the perfect positioning there definitely uh, hampered the effectiveness of that push. And uh, also that, that one of the real turning points was when that Calliope barrage killed both of those snipers. Cruise lot. So now Overlord with pack in this position, even better than the M1 with its high penetration. Causing a few issues. The has arrived. Will this be for command tank? See sniper and jumping and into the smoke. Trying to prevent this cap. Cruise is desperate now for VPs. Getting under a hundred make some daring plays that's for sure it's like overlords perhaps going to set up a triple cap now it's going to make things even harder for cruise German is still on armor piercing round so he doesn't want to be caught out I switch ammunition types and another daring cruise push Looks like Cruz has invested himself in another sniper, so he's banking it all on these snipers. Now, Stubb getting the bolt here, sitting right in front of this pack. This could be trouble. Taking two pack shots. Sherman now rotating. Takes engine damage though, but the Stubb's in a bad spot. One Sherman, oh, but the pack misses. Oh, main gun destroyed on the Stubb. He's out of range of the AT gun, and it looks like, looks like the Sherman may get away. Where's the P4 command take? It's coming forwards. But we've got a Jackson on the scene now. Before Command Tank does have trouble penetrating the frontal armor of the German. Here comes the Jackson. It's a good shot off. No AT gun for Cruz either. No Grandiers nearby. This Jackson could take down this P4 Command Tank right here and the Stug, and that will be the game. He pops smoke. Here comes a Puma note. Desperate plays here from Cruz. He calls in the Puma. Jackson misses through the smoke. Puma making the. Uh, Making good here on the uh, Jackson's incredibly low health. Jackson only has 480 health, so there's one of the things, <laughs> there's one of the issues with the uh, Jackson. It's over low health. You have to be very careful with it. But I was kind of surprised there with the Jackson's armor actually bouncing shots from that P4 command tank. I thought they would penetrate much more frequently than that. Not sure what the penetration is on that P4 command tank. But the Jackson certainly doesn't have much armor. The enemy is taking our territory. Oh, I bet Overlord is uh, <laughs> wishing he had a collide right now against that concentration of forces. Tactical concentration, we're avoiding using the word blobs these days. There's a uh, lot of microaggressions. Oh, Puma feeling a bit bold here. Probably going to take an AT grenade. Not pop smoke. Or oh, Overlord can react. Here comes the Sherman back up to full health. So is the Jackson. We can probably afford to switch this Sherman over to armor. I mean, to uh, high, high explosive rounds now. High explosive does a decent job penetrating the Puma and. Uh, can rely on that Jackson for AT gun, as well as the AT gun, of course, for the anti-tank duties. Kind of needs the high explosive rounds as well because 
Doesn't have that Calliope to lean on for the anti infantry damage. Cruz so low on VPs now, he is a really hurting. Overlord though has been suffering quite a bit of bleed to these snipers. This one up to 4 kills, has been on the field for long, this one up to 16. Pioneers ready for assignment. like Cruz opting for another Pioneer squad. Good choice because he needs that extra repair speed. He's got quite a large armoured force now and needs those Pioneers for their repair speeds. Jackson rolling down the road. Puma in a tough spot. Here comes a Stug for some support. Stug instead focuses on the rifle squad. Stug also somewhat frail. Has 560 health so I believe it's 560. Oh, Jackson in trouble now. Takes a Faust. Still got on the chase. Still this uh, AT gun in a good spot though. Covering the center. No AT gun's getting worked on by the sniper. If he uses the incendiary shot here, may wipe it. Does not do so though. Which is targets to this rifle squad trying to get a flank here. In fact, Bazooka's coming in from the side here. And cross smoke on the Stug. And this squad may go down on retreat now. P4 command tank on his heels. May use the incendiary shot, maybe on his snipers as well. Kept it down to one man. Desperately trying to cut away from this rifle squad with his sniper. Cannot afford to use the incendiary shot. In comes a strafing run, but the issue with this strafing run it does take a long time to arrive if it's targeting something in the center of the map. If you're on the edges of the map it's quite potent because that plane doesn't have much travel time but in the center of the map this thing does have a hard time finding its target. Ooh, sniper feeling a bit bold here. Looks like he's trying to snipe these vehicle crews. Does get one crew member before <laughs> making a hasty getaway. But that is Cruz's worst nightmare at this stage. Here's the Calliope, and I'm sure he's going to be targeting those snipers with it. And as we can see, the Calliope has turned this side of the map into the surface of the moon. So many craters. It's really been a hectic match. So we're going to see a rifle grenade coming in. Nicely dodged there by Overlord, though. Oh, this is so risky trying to cap in this situation. Yep, he loses his rifle squad there. When your squad is on the wrong side of a shot blocker like that, explosive shots always, always hit your squad. So, as you can see there, those P4 command tank shots had laser-like accuracy against that rifle squad and wiped it so quickly. So if you're on the wrong side of the shot blocker, just the hell out of there, you're better off standing out in the open. Oh, here comes another ballsy push from Cruz, straight down the center though, Pax in a good spot for it. Looks like he's leading the way with his P4 command tank, he's got the skirts and the uh, high durability. Looks like the Calliope's targeting the tank, Stug goes down to the pack, down goes the Jackson though as well. Oh, but down goes the <laughs> Puma. Command tank to try and target the pack so it can make an escape, but it looks like it's going to go down to the Sherman. In fact, no, it goes down to a bazooka. And uh, once again, Cruz making a charge straight down the center, but that pack was in such a good position and that push goes horribly wrong as a result. Oh, down goes the sniper. Nice shot there from the, from the Sherman. Oh my god. And. Uh, not sure what Cruz is going to do now. Probably going to get another P4 command tank, I imagine. Does have the Stug available for the anti tank. What's he doing with this thing, though? He's taking a few bazooka shots. Oh, wow! Stug connects with the uh, squad there. I can't believe that. Usually its main gun is 
awful against infantry. We are losing a sector. Oh, Dowell MG42s on Vet 3 Grens. This squad is a Rambo and Turbinator combined now. Especially if he gets that P4 command tank or all those things. That'd be crazy good. VPs continue to be hotly contested. Crews well aware of his situation. But we've got M1 in a good spot here. Stroop thinks he's caught this Shimao position, but really, Overlord's making some good plays with his AT guns. Uh, really been on point with this AT gun positioning this game and it seems to be the difference so far. Also the fact that Cruz hasn't put any Talon lines down, I think that's good as cause, but he hasn't really had the breathing room and honestly Overlord's been quite defensive with his tanks. His tanks haven't really been into Cruz's territory that much, so it's hard to place uh, mines that are going to be effective when your opponent's not going over your territory with his vehicles. And uh, you haven't had much time in your opponent's territory. Before Command Tank has taken the AT grenade. It looks like Pax trying to line up a few choice shots to follow up, but unsuccessful. Oh! S Mines almost takes down that V3 rifle squad. He's gonna risk it though. He's gonna try to stand on the edge of that capping circle, knowing that Cruz doesn't have much time left now. Oh, here comes Clyde Barrage straight on the sniper and this Austria squad in the centre. They have to give up capping for a second. Avoid getting hit by that. Does manage to decrease the pack as well. It looks like he's going to try to steal the pack in fact with this Austrian squad. And that's a good pick up now. Sherman coming forward so trying to prevent that cap. He's on high explosive rounds as well. Looks like he's going to take a Faust. Where is the Stug? Stug's back in base. He cannot can't do anything to prevent this now so that was a pretty safe maneuver from Overlord. If that Stug had been nearby maybe the Sherman would have been taken down but unfortunately for Cruz that is not the case. Oh double MG42 is just ripping through this captain. Oh, and now, now the sniper joins in on the fun, this LMG rifleman. It looks like he's trying to stick around just to get the cap. He does manage to get out of there before he takes an incendiary shot. In fact, that probably would have been a good idea there from Cruz. Once again, he's failing to use the incendiary shot on his sniper, and I think that may be the difference here. All the good players do seem to use that incendiary shot very frequently, especially if you've got like 500 munitions or more in the bank. To make it rain. We have a new sniper under our command. Once again, investing in double snipers. That seems to be the core of his strategy. Followed up with Ostrupen for capping and uh, crowd support. Might be targeting the sniper, forcing a few retreats. Oh, wipes that Pyo squad! It's quite a bit of damage to these tanks as well. Might be doing. Well, that's a, in fact, that's a second Calliope, so we've got two Calliopes now. One of them, yeah. And that's going to make life miserable for cruisers. Infantry army's already so low doesn't have enough armor to try and push these down either. Pretty much afford to use these Calliope Barrages just to take these snipers. Sherman is all that Overlord needs right now. All he's got to deal with is that Stug really, the before command take not really that effective against the Sherman. Ooh, down goes that Ostrupen as well, wow. Cruz losing a few squads here. Does have uh, much of the VPs under his control. Yeah. 
pretty close to seeing a triple cap as well, but there are so many squads going down. I don't know if he's going to be able to hold on to these VPs for much longer. He's going to endure all this calliope fire as well. And I'm just about ready to fire already. Oh, he's coming forward with this P4 command tank. Trying to do a crush, I think, here. Very risky to take an AT grenade, not. Looks like he kind of panic retreated that squad. He could have easily got an AT grenade off. But the thing is, the AT grenade does have a minimum range, so... Sometimes it can be hard when the tank is right on top of you to actually land one of those things. Enemy forces are securing our territory. Probably going to see a Calliope barrage on the center trying to prevent this cap. This type is feeling quite bold. like the captain's going to stick around, make use of his sprint to try and hold on to this VP. Our and we've got a big concentration of riflemen running straight down the centre now. Get a few choice shots off on that vetted up sniper as well. Let's bring up his AT gun for some support here at counts, nicely done. The Calliope's getting close for a tightly clustered barrage here, this could be devastating if it connects. Dirk takes engine damage, but still these riflemen did take a lot of bleed in that advance. Looks like the flyp is backing off, so is the AT gun. Still crews suffering under the drain now. He's got to make some plays, he's desperately trying to kill the stuff with the snipers. Flyp targeting snipers again, who's hit to that though. Straight to the side. This rifle squad about to go down though. No. Oh! Second Calliope! Devastating! Connects with one sniper, connects with the second sniper! That's probably gonna be game. Wow, these Calliopes. And uh, I think that was largely caused because I don't think they were in range of that uh, P4 command tank aura. And once again, the P4 command tank aura could have been the difference there. And that's the most sniper surviving. That being said, snipers do have, I think, 82 health, so they don't usually die to one rocket, but one rocket and a bit of AoE from the second rocket is easily killed. And the AoE on the Calliope rockets are so great. We are losing a sector. Oh, P4 Command Tech takes into damage and cruise calls GG, having lost his snipers, his infantry force shattered. Just uh, decides to call it there. Well, that was a really good game by both players. Got to see some ballsy pushes from Cruz, some tactical play there from Overlord, and uh, yeah, just a really good game. And I'll wrap on that, guys. If you'd like your game to be cast by me, details in the video description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you all for the next thrilling installment. Goodbye, and good luck.